I'm Ron Erickson, and this is Project Synchro. All right, welcome back, guys. If you remember from a couple of weeks ago when we put the engine in the car, I was having some issues with that center drive shaft coming a little bit too close to the steering rack. There was some uh, not quite interference, but uh, there wasn't enough room for me to be comfortable running the engine in its current position. And really what I want to do is move the engine forward by about a half inch. Now, mm, to the layman, this doesn't really sound like a big deal. A half inch, maybe, you know, the, the width of your pinky is, is uh, you know, a minute distance in some senses, but uh, uh, from a machine standpoint, that's a big distance to be moving. Mount, engine mounts and, and uh, axles and things like that are, are meant to be in one place. And even though I've done a lot of weird stuff in this car so far, it's all kind of things that just bolt together and they're all Volkswagen parts and everything's kind of like Legos. I know we say like Subarus are, are definitely like Legos, but, but Volkswagens are, you know, creeping up on the Lego status uh, more and more. That You know, it's, it's easy enough that... Uh, uh, I can kind of just bolt this crazy transmission in, and since it's a, a takeoff of a, a front-wheel drive package anyway, it just works. So uh, anyway, it's not too far out to say that I want to move this thing, but what I do have to do is uh, figure out how I'm going to modify these mounts to accommodate some sort of forward shift to uh, uh, make more room for the center drive shaft. So um, there are three engine mounts, and, and I say engine mounts loosely because one, the one I'm holding, is a transmission mount. The uh, passenger side rear engine mount is, uh, you know, on the back of the engine, and uh, it's got sort of a big puck that's got a cradle in it, and the cradle just has a bolt that runs through it. So what I'm going to do in that, uh, in that situation is slot out where that bolt goes through, and uh, that'll allow it to move forward and backward. Same goes for the front mount, which bolts through uh, right in the front and center where the uh, bell housing, you know, meets the, uh, you know, the engine and transmission meet where you have your starter. It all bolts through right there and you have a, a mount in the front center and then kind of forming like a triangle, you have this transmission mount that mounts off of the uh, final drive, sort of the uh, uh, back of the case on the transmission. And uh, it's the one that is not as forgiving. I can't just uh, wallow out a hole and kind of shift stuff around. If you look at this hole, and I'll hold this a little bit closer, Kyle, hopefully that's in, in range there. This hole, uh, you know, if we're looking at the, uh, if we're looking down, the front of the car is, is this way. So uh, I can't really move forward and backward at all. I can move a little left and right, which is nice, but uh, you know, not a lot of leeway going on with this mount. So, uh, for reasons that will sort of become apparent when we take a look at the car, it's uh, necessary to modify this piece. Now, this piece is junk as is. This is cast aluminum. A lot of people break these and it's kind of a weird situation. I was trying to find some examples of uh, uh, situations where people made these mounts out of steel, but they decided to do a whole nother mount situation off of a later model Volkswagen that uh, Smarter men than I, Mr. Uh, uh, Josh Wimpy, or the Wimpy brothers, uh, Mr. Steve Menendez, which uh, we'll, we'll post a link to one of his recent videos. I helped him make a, a mount uh, for his Land Speed Racer car the, uh, uh, in, in a, a Rampage truck, which actually has a Volkswagen motor in it and an O2A transmission. He mounted off of that uh, driver's side frame rail, which is, once again, smarter men than I, that's, a, that's probably a more stout location, but my car's all painted and I don't really feel like drilling holes through it right now and it's a little bit wider and it's a whole complicated situation. So what I'm going to do is just accept that Volkswagen uh, knew what they were doing when they made this mount. They just didn't quite make it strong enough and they didn't make it adjustable. So I'm going to take some pieces of steel uh, like the one that I've already taken down to Kendall's and, and cut out on the bandsaw. This is 3 16 uh, uh, steel plate. This is the plate that I used for my uh, four main roll cage foot plates. It is, uh, by and large, much thicker than was really necessary. I really only needed to use eighth inch, but uh, I decided to go pretty crazy in some spots. So that meant I had uh, a lot of leftover 3 16 stuff. 
So this is going to be the piece that sort of uh, matches what mounts to the transmission itself. And then uh, a little bit later here, we'll cut out the piece that uh, goes on the subframe and has the slot cut into it. And then we'll get everything kind of bolted in the car. And once we get it bolted in the car, we'll probably do some cardboard aided design and decide just exactly how we're gonna bridge that gap between this steel piece and the plate on the subframe. So without getting too crazy long-winded here, I'm going to start drilling some holes in this piece. We'll get it bolted in the car. We'll cut over the bandsaw, do some slicing, some more drilling and bolting. And uh, hopefully here fairly soon, we'll have uh, something that we might be able to uh, sand and weld and, and uh, get this engine where it needs to be. So I'm gonna get to drilling here. uglier than sin, but since there's a radius on the tube and since I only have a couple thickness uh, cutting blades anyway, I wasn't going to waste my time just slowly scalping stuff away. Might as well just send it home. It's friggin' thicker than quarter inch. Anyway, so won't matter. Fill it with weld. This stuff's all way, way, way thicker than that cast mount. Anyway, so hopefully we're overbuilding it by some crazy factor where now the failure mode's gonna be busting the side of the transmission case off or something ridiculous like that. Knock on wood, that would, that would really suck, but at least the mount didn't break. And that's contrary to my belief that you need mechanical fuses in other places, but I, I think we're good. If, if I don't build a good enough skid plate, that's, that's the other problem where if the skid plate's not stopping this stuff, then you know, if this breaks, I've probably messed my pants and had a whole bad day and there's other situations going on. So I'm, I'm confident.
stated, they either flip this around or cut just a little relief in that tube to get it to sit, grind a little bit to get it to sit flush. Because as you can see, I can kind of get a little, little wiggle room out of her. And then uh, once I have this all fit up nice and pretty, I'll weld around that sucker and then throw another 45 tube underneath it. And if Kyle gets his way, maybe I'll put one on top. So, I don't know. I believe that about does it for this evening. Decent amount of progress. Didn't kill myself on this tab. Didn't lose any fingers. Now you know what it's like to uh, not quite start to finish, but just what it's like making a making a mount. We have a little family joke that uh, everything is a mount. You got to have a mount for everything. My grandfather was a sheet metal worker, and he always said, "Well, let's if we're putting something together, we got to make a mount for it." So that's how you make a mount. That's my way to make it is is get both you know everything that needs to be super accurate all bolted into place. And then your intermediary, uh, once you get a position where you want it, you just weld around it and then you can pull all your pieces off and you know it's perfect because everything was bolted in when you welded it. So you don't have to worry about uh, having a jig or anything like that. Just do it all in place and you know it works. So uh, we'll get this finished up soon and we're going to move on to brakes after that. I'm so excited. If you've noticed, we do have some brake stuff laying around, but... Uh, I don't have all my parts in. I've got some adapters coming in. We're gonna make some, we're gonna run some tube. I'm sure that'll be definitely more than one episode. There's a lot going on with the brake system in this car. Uh, and I'm really excited to show you guys. So once again, uh, thanks for watching this, uh, hopefully not too boring uh, episode, watching me uh, almost hurt myself and laugh a little bit at my, my mediocre safety standards at best. And uh, I don't know, it's been fun. So. Uh, thanks for all your wonderful comments and likes and, and whatnot. So be sure to uh, continue to like, subscribe, and share all of our videos. Kyle and I greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. hate it when people yell about shop safety because it's stupid safety third. safety third oh i know what i'll do this reminds me of my favorite quote in super bad what are you making i'm just drilling holes last two weeks fuck it